Where are you? Mm, where? Oh, hey, baby, what is this? Breakfast in bed? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sweetheart, come here. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Wow, what did you make for me? Baby. Baby, these are all my favorite things. <gasps> oh, and coffee. Mm, I did not sleep very well last night. <sighs> Thank you. Before coffee, I need um, I need one of these. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so I'm so in love with you. I don't know if I can make that more clear, but um, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, baby, you're an angel. What's the occasion? I mean, this must have taken a lot of time. You must have been really... Baby, you must have been up early this morning. Well, I, I hope you got some rest. This is... This is amazing. This is... If, mm, this would have taken a lot of planning. Yeah, it would have. It would have taken a lot of planning to do all of this. And you've been really busy this week. There's no way... That you've been putting thought into this all week. Hmm. Okay, I'm suspicious. I'm officially suspicious. No, 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 no. Don't you cuddle me. You look tired. Are you tired? You look really exhausted. Yeah, you do. You look really exhausted. I see it under your eyes. I see it in the way you're stretching. Yeah, little stretches, like here and there. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Baby, tell me you did not stay up last night. Tell me you... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm going to kill you. I am going to kill you. It's not... Fair. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Stop. No, 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 no. You should have told me that you were up. You should have told me you're up. You just let me ramble on. No, 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 no. Don't, don't cuddle me. Do not, do not cuddle me. I don't need your kisses. <sighs> okay, you can cuddle me. But you're not touching this food. Mm -mm. I'm not sharing. I hate everything but this food right now. So you best be warned to stay very far away. You know what? No, I am mad at you. I am mad. I'm just because I'm... Well, let me eat in peace for a minute and think. Let me mentally escape this present. I'm really embarrassed, babe. Of course I am, because that was all supposed to be in secret. It was... Also, well, because you didn't w tell me you were awake. <laughs> this is not all on me. I asked you. I deliberately and specifically asked you. I asked you, baby, are you awake? And you said nothing. That is, that's rude. That's really, I'm just, okay. I'm not, I mean, I, I am, I am mad at you because you should have told me that you were awake. I'm just really embarrassed. Also, also, I need coffee. No, no, don't you, don't you help me reach for things. You stay right there. You stay exactly where you are. I don't trust any sudden movements from you. Not right now. Mm -mm. Oh, where was I going with that? This coffee is great. Oh, I hate that this coffee is great. I hate that I like everything on this plate. I hate, I hate that I really want to hate you. I really want to hate you. Oh, but I'm like so bad at it. <laughs> no, but I am mad at you and I'm embarrassed. This sucks. Just because I like you a lot. Just being good. <laughs> Just because I'm crazy about you. Crazy being the operative word here. Does not make anything else I just said untrue. And 
And if you were really, mm -hmm, if you were really listening as well <laughs> as you s seem to claim that you were, then you would have paid attention to the fact that I didn't want you to hear those things for a reason. Yes, I specifically told you while I rattled on for like 15 minutes. I rattled on for half hour? That's not true. Okay, wait a minute, but I went to bed at... Oh my gosh, I, you know what? That, that doesn't help. Why would you say that? Why would you make yourself even more incriminating? You're just a fool. A culinary skilled, lovable clown prince is what you are. And I was making a point before I took a bite. No, you cannot have any. This is not for you. This is all... This is all a peace offering, I can imagine. Hmm. Well, it's not a peace offering, is it? This is you just being really, really sweet to me. In response to everything I said. Okay, now listen, though. Listen, there have been a lot of hours between when I started talking to you and this breakfast in bed right and um a lot has changed mhm mm mhm mm i'm serious you think you know things hmm you think you know things but you don't know things because i worked out a number of things in my sleep and now i have new opinions yes i do <laughs> yes i do and you should be afraid you should be very 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 afraid of me at all times at any time because I'm very scary. I'm a very scary person. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> okay, in all honesty, baby, first of all, this is very sweet. And I very much appreciate this gesture. Also, though, you should have told me you were up. So I am mad and I am embarrassed. But I also love you so much. And I see, I always see, that you love me so much. This was really, really kind of you doesn't make up for the fact the point is I'm confused but I'm not confused because I worked out some details now, last night oh, and I guess like at this juncture I might as well just spill but but I, I meant what I said I meant what I said last night you know the, the, the fact that I haven't bring a, I haven't brought a lot of this up to you because I feel like like I don't if it's if you if there's only so much you can do, like why bother you with it? You know, and I know that I know that you understand that, and I also understand where you're coming from, and that you know would you you would like to at least try. Like you're right. Like it's not my place to strip you of that agency, but I do just very instinctually choose and feel. You know, I feel a very divine need to protect you because I'm so in love, but I don't think, but a lot has changed, like I said, so I'm going to get into it, um, I was thinking about a lot, mm, this is so awkward, no, it's not inherently awkward, it's just awkward, because I didn't expect to have this conversation with you this morning, I thought that this was all going to be just me with a pen to paper in my journal, scripting it out, but here we are, so I just, I didn't, I just wasn't ready for this, you... You sneaky one, you. That's right, sneaky one. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I've been thinking about it. Um, and there are a couple of major turning points. Like there are a couple of major like aha moments I had last night and this morning. One of which is consistency, right? So a lot of my fears are really just a matter of like, how do you predict the future? You know, like if you make a firm commitment today that you're going to commit to in 80 years, you know, like how sustainable is that? But I realize we make commitments like that 
all the time, you know, when I was a child, I made a strong commitment that I would be a force for good in this world. And I certainly hope I've held to that for a million years. And well, <laughs> I'm not a vampire, or am I? See, that's another reason why you shouldn't trust me quite yet. You don't know. You don't know if I've been around for a million years or whether my birth certificate is a lie. You don't, you will never know. I suppose when I start aging, then you'll know. And I suppose that's something that we can discover together. Okay, listen, but the point is there are all kinds of commitments that we do make and we stick to um, because they have extraordinary payoff. Um, and we recognize that, you know, it's a, like, for example, when I decided as a child that I would, you know, what was I going to do? Was I going to be a, a Darth Sith or was I going to be, you know, a good guy, a force for good? And it just made all the sense of the world. Of course, it'd be a force for good because, you know, this all sounds very elementary, but I was a child. So I'm just speaking from that decision making point. Um, you know, obviously life is far more complex, but speaking from this decision alone as a kid, from a kid's perspective, even then I understood, you know, like it's no skin off my back to be a force for good. Like if I'm, I will in that decision, not only will that be good for me, but it's also good for other people. So like, why not make that choice? And so therefore that choice has been very easy to commit to. And that's not to say I haven't had like my dark moments in which, you know, you've heard me complain and be like, I need to be meaner, <laughs> you know, but you know, there's, it's not to say we won't have our moments of weakness or, or wishy-washiness within committed choices. But at the end of the day, like, no, I'm never just going to completely uproot that decision and be like, all right, I'm just going to blow up a planet now. You know, like that's, it never goes that deep. That was really long winded. <laughs> the point is like, I think we can predict certain elements of the future, assuming we've thought things through as simple as that sounds. And I think what I did think through last night is your consistency. You know, while people do change, you know, I recognize like instead of fearing all of the th all of the unknown variables, which is fair, which is certainly I think a justified fear, but I think it makes more sense. I think it's you I I think it's I will amount to a more plausibly accurate conclusion if I look at what has been if I if I if I focus on the consistent variables and I know I sound very intelligent right now <laughs> does that do it for you variables no don't touch me I didn't say I could be touched I'm still mad at you I'm just telling you what I worked out um and only because you made me breakfast <clears throat> it's really good <laughs> don't look at me like that I, I can't look <laughs> stop and this is okay so this is the perfect segue into my point you have consistently made me happy consistently we have consistently communicated respectfully we have consistently empathized with one another we have consistently supported each other we've consistently believed in each other we have consistently made each other laugh. And I know that for some people that's not a deal breaker, but for me, like I that that a little bit of that goes such a long way. And I think we've consistently played nice, if that makes sense. You know, like we play together and we always play well together. We're good to each other. We care about each other's emotional, psychological being or we care about each other's bodies I mean we've consistently cared for each other um you know never have we taken advantage of each other never have we displayed apathy towards one another's needs or pain or you know never have we showcased any um you know dangerously sadistic tendencies and I know this is all beginning to sound a little dark but like these are things that people experience in all kinds of relationships all around the world right like we've consistently we've just always consistently made each other feel good and that's and I think you know I've been 
I've been just repeating myself here with the word consistency, consistency, consistency. But yeah, we've consistently been good for each other and good to each other. And while we can change in a number of ways, and I think since you met me, I think I've changed quite a bit. I mean, you know, even in little ways, like when you first met me, I was a tea drinker. <laughs> um, and in larger ways, you know, I was, I was pr- kind of a doormat when you first met me. Um, and now, fortunately, you know, I've, I've worked on that. And now I'm far greater at setting boundaries and, and deliberately protecting those boundaries and, you know, it's snapping where I need to. I mean, I'm, I'm far greater at defending myself um, against negative energies than I was when you first met me. So I do feel very different. But in those committed choices, you know, in, in those committed people skills, especially as far as those committed relationship decisions as to how I'm going to treat you and, you know, the decisions you've made and how you're going to treat me, we have consistently delivered in, you know, just, just, how do I put this? It's like, oh, this is going to get a little bit metaphorical, but bear with, um, I'm drinking coffee, so I'm feeling awfully poetic. It's an aesthetic thing. And don't all poets drink coffee? (laughs) Isn't that like a trope? It is a trope. Nope, no kisses. Stay right there. I'm still expressing myself and I'm still enjoying breakfast in bed. So it's like, okay, it's like our relationship is like we've created, not only have we created the foundation of a safe space, but we have consistently like watered and fertilized that garden in a sense. Like we've consistently thrived and contributed to proceeding to thrive within that safe space and in this safe space this relationship has been sacred to us neither one of us have has had any instinct in hurting each other or you know like like there's never neither one of us have ever like gotten out to the prospect of like getting away with something bad you know something that will hurt the other person I mean that's that's never even crossed our minds ever um you know quite the opposite I think I mean, look what, what you did for me this morning. Well, I'm still mad at you for what you did to me last night. Um, this is really sweet. Like, I feel like it's it's we've instinctually as well as decisively proceeded to respect and cherish the, the, the sanctity of this relationship. And I know that that sounds a little bit outrageous, but like, I think I just, I think I just articulated within that sentence alone exactly how I feel about us so soak it up (laughs) take it in and maybe you can have a sip of this coffee only if you want to do not take a sip just because I've made a kind offer of the morning no you can also have a bite of food or no you cannot kiss me yet though I'm not quite there yet I'm still embarrassed <laughs> so we're not done talking yet I have more yeah but this is really good mm, and you're cute I hate that you're cute I like re- no honestly though I really hate it sometimes because like I really like I have, I have feelings <laughs> I have angry feelings that like they're they're just they're just going to like fizzle away or like contort into smiles because you make me smile. But I'm like, what am, is that normal? Like, (laughs) do you see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm supposed to take this anger out somewhere, but then it just like changes when I look at you. And I think that's probably healthier than the alternative, but it's just not typical. (laughs) But that's exactly it, isn't it? We're not typical. We, I mean, we ought to be typical. You know, I wish, 
I, I wish that everybody could have what we have. I think what I'm trying to say is like, I think you and I could choose to do anything as far as like next steps are concerned or no next steps are concerned and we would still, like no matter what we do, I think we'd be okay. And that's not to say there wouldn't, that's not to say everything I said last night would not be in need of observation. Um, But yeah, baby, I do think that considering the consistencies, you know, even if we ran into some complications, some identity crisis or um, expectation checking or reevaluating, I guess I don't see why we wouldn't be able to get through it together and not in a way that was like grueling agony, you know. I think what's special about this relationship is that wherever, because, you know, like there's a there's this... I think there's a really, when people say like relationships like are work, you should work, like I think honestly that advice is coming from people who aren't in good relationships or they're, they're not expressing themselves clearly because there's work like going to the office work, like there's grueling work or like, you know, carrying heavy bags work. And then there's work like, like completing a video game, you know what I mean? Or there's work like you're working on something that you love. And so just because there's time and energy in and thus qualifies as work doesn't mean it feels like you've sacrificed joy to to proceed within that workspace. You know what I mean? Like anytime we've ever had to, you know, anytime we've ever had a miscommunication or a disagreement or... You know, we've had different needs that we've had to juggle and balance. Like, yeah, there's been work in. There's been conversations like these. Like one would say that this is literally doing the work in our relationship, but it doesn't feel bad. It feels like the work of this relationship isn't taking away from our happiness. The work seems to be contributing to more happiness. And I think, yeah, I I guess what I'm saying is, I'm not convinced I'm not convinced that the concerns I I brought to the table last night would be invalidated by just the power of love. But I do think because we're so strong in respecting each other's thoughts and and boundaries and we're so good at communicating, I think that as any obstacles with any changes that we would see within either, you know, like the relationship or even ourselves, you know, because we're going to proceed to change. We have, because we've consistently worked well together, I don't see why new changes would mean suddenly we're not going to work well together. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to tell you is I'm here to, I'm here to double down on the consistencies I've seen as opposed to fearing new obstacles I'm unfamiliar with and I have every reason to believe that our foundation is so strong that you know and when we have history history speaks for itself we have consistently worked well together through new obstacles you know like every day new things happen and you know each year we, we've faced new you know questions and and we've met new people and done new things and gone to new places and you know, there've been all kinds of, there's all, all, but there's been all kinds of questionable terrain that we've always successfully and lovingly and respectfully worked through together. So why would any new stages threaten our relationship otherwise? Um, okay, I'm going to put this coffee down. Okay, now you can kiss me. <laughs> I think that was my biggest point. Mm. I do have one more point. But it's simpler. It's simpler. It's really quick. (laughs) Mm. I like that we like talking to each other. I know that's a really simple, silly thing to say, but... Baby, some people don't. (laughs) 
Some people don't. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that too. <laughs> oh, those lips. Oh, you're killing me. Okay. Um. And also, if you so wish, you may have some of this food. <laughs> yeah, I permit you. Oh, right. So the the simple thing. Um, you know, I still I still think we have more to discuss. Um, I don't think I'm quite ready to, you know, spring the question on you this morning. I don't think I'm ready to like shock you with a proposal. <laughs> like I'm not entirely ready for that moment yet, but honestly, I really, well, I don't, let me be honest with you. Well, on one hand, I think it's freaking weird that the government gets involved in our love life. Like, as a rule of thumb, I think that's bizarre, you know? And, and I think, if, if, I just, I'm too, way too much of a history buff to, like, feel the romance of marriage, you know? Like, the, like, the roots of marriage are really dark, you know? It was like, families being like, oh my God, somebody please take my daughter, you know? Like, <laughs> please, we're gonna give you a dowry and everything, just take her, ah, oh. like, whatever. I mean, we won't get into that here, but, like... The historical facts of how weird a lot of the traditions are too just kind of blow my mind. Like it was enough. Um, so like <laughs> maybe I'm such a history buff. This is why it's hard for me to travel anywhere <laughs> because I always know too much. Like historically, or like or the anthropology of a new like country or city or state or like, I I just. I know. I, I just, I need to get better at like compartmentalizing, you know, like, okay, there's going to be pros and cons to most things. And like, sometimes you just need to choose pros. Um, but all of that being said, you know, to take it back to my first point, you know, our, our, our wedding can be however we want. You know, I have friends who like completely changed a number of traditions. Like for example, instead of like the daughter walking down the aisle with her dad, they had the two families meet in the middle and like hug each other and like, you know, like do like lovey dovey family things. And like the two families mixed in the middle of the room. And then of course the bride and groom then proceeded back up the aisle to, you know, finish up the ceremony. But like, that was cool. Um, and I think like really we, we can do anything. We can do anything we want. Um, so if I get too much in my head about like, this is the loaded history of certain traditions that don't do it for me romantically. Like, we can do whatever we want. We can change things here and there. Um, but sure, like, I love the idea of flowers and a party and people that we love coming together. Like, that's cool. Um, but back to the whole government thing. Like, I think it is weird that the government, like, has any part in our, like, love life. But I'll tell you what I do appreciate is I mean obviously tax incentives are nice but mostly like oh, what is it called like the the medical it's, it's it's so like god forbid you were in the hospital like I not only would you be able to allow for me to make any hard decisions that you may not physically be able to make but I would also be able to like go in and see you more so than say if like I wasn't you know legally your wife if I went in, I was like, yeah, like long-term relationship, we might as well be married legally. I still wouldn't be able to offer you the same kind of support that I could as your wife. And to be perfectly honest, like that alone feels like a selling point to me. Um, but that's just me. And I told, and like I said, we still have more to discuss. Um, but like, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. You know, and honestly, like, I hate the idea that, like, there are certain countries that, like, don't even do visiting hours. Like, it's just so easy to be in a room with a loved one who is ill, you know, and here it isn't. But I, you know, have to understand, like, listen, I'm not ready to, like, move anytime soon. So, you know, so long as I choose to be here, there are certain rules I'm going to have to play by, one of which may be if I want to be as supportive to you as possible, like, you know, for non-romantic reasons, to be your wife might just be the smartest thing to do. Um, but just for the record, 
just because oh no 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 my first reason was romantic I was just gonna say just because that was a non-romantic reason to get married does not mean that I'm like doting the prospect of marrying you that's not true I really like the idea of calling you my husband absolutely um you know like I said I like the idea of everybody recognizing that and like it's that's a beautiful thing um two people who are so compatible that they're going to be life partners you know and have each other's backs forever I mean that's that's extraordinary and you're extraordinary and I'm so grateful oh my gosh like I'm so grateful to even have an opportunity like that with you or with the point is you being such an extraordinary catch so much so that I want you for the rest of my life to be by my side and I, I trust you to be by my side for the rest of my life through sickness and health and all those romantic things they do say at weddings like that's extraordinary and I want you to know that that is not lost on me at all baby that's not lost on me at all and everything I said in that first point I stand by a hundred percent and while that second point may not be romantic you know I think it's kind of sexy that we can <laughs> communicate <laughs> about anything <laughs> and understand it's not going to be taken the wrong way or you know I don't know where I'm going with that. I think I'm just staring at you right now and I, th I really want to cuddle up because you win. I'm not mad at you anymore. No, I should still be mad at you, but I'm not. Oh, but I'm not. I want to be mad, but I'm not. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. It feels good to cuddle you. Oh, <laughs> it feels too good. You're too good to be true. You know that. <laughs> mm. I love you. <laughs> mm, that isn't obvious. I will proceed to tell you I love you. Regardless of how obvious it may be. Because I like to tell you. And I think you like me to tell you. Yeah, you like me to tell you? <laughs> Who cares? I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> I love you so much. Mm. You really are my Superman, you know that? <laughs> And I do mean that in a non-codependent way. I mean that just authentically and it speaks directly to the kind of person you are and the kind of joy and care you've brought into my life. That Okay, brought in's not a word. Okay, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Brought into my life. That for, you know, oftentimes I wondered was even possible. <laughs> you take such good care of me. Yeah, baby, we take care of each other. Always and forever, I guess, yeah? <laughs> Let's see. In theory... I do like the sound of that. But we're not done talking. We're not done eating. So maybe... Listen, my brain has been working fast. So maybe by the time I'm done eating breakfast, I'll have all the answers. But I'm going to need to get your opinions too. So, okay. That's fine. Chow down. <laughs> you can share this with me. And maybe when we're no longer on empty stomachs, we can... I don't know, maybe just start fantasizing a little bit. Have a little bit of fun with this notion and see where it goes from there, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right, 
gorgeous. Stop distracting me. There's food 